Okay, so if you've ever wanted a little private server for you and your friends um, on either Bedrock or Java Edition Minecraft, um, you're kind of left with server providers so that you can have like a 24-7 server. Um, and these can be quite expensive, as you can see here, you know, it starts at $8 per month. Um, I can show you how to get way cheaper. So here um, we have the Raspberry Pi 4. If you don't know what it is, it's just a tiny, tiny computer. It's not very fast, but it's plenty fast for what we'll be doing. Um, these cost, you know, a hundred Australian dollars, which is about 64 US dollars. It's really cheap. Um, most of them will come with an S, uh, micro, micro SD card as well. Um, but if not, these will only be like an extra $10 or something. Um, and all you need is a 16 gigabyte one, super easy. Um, and you just need a little ethernet connection and a spot next to like wherever your router is in your house. Um, so anyway, moving on, um, basically what you're going to want to do is go to the official Ubuntu website, the Raspberry Pi page, and then just download the 64 bit Raspberry Pi 4 image. Um, and once that starts downloading, um, I'll get back to you when it's done. Okay, so what I've done is I've just extracted the image into this folder from the um, from the archive there. Uh, you can just use 7-zip. That's a simple little uh, archive opening tool and then, you know, just drag and drop. So anyway, once you've done that, you want to get um, Win32 Disk Imager. It's just a really simple, lightweight, um, cheap program that lets you basically burn operating system images into... Um, you know, the little micro SD card that you're using. So you'll also need a little, you know, a way to connect the micro SD card to your computer. Um, usually you do this with a USB or with an SD card adapter, uh, whatever works for you. Yet yeah, um, also your Raspberry Pi might even come with one. So once you've picked the image here, just after I opened up that, uh, you just go drop down to your device and pick whatever device, um, uh, sorry, whatever, um, you know, whatever drive it's connected to. I don't have it plugged in at the moment because I've already got mine set up. But um, basically, once you've done that, um, yeah, you can just kind of click write and it'll just go through and completely write onto the card. And then you'll be set to just chuck it into your Raspberry Pi. Um, if you can't find your device here in this drop down, it's probably got something to do with the micro SD card being um, kind of like partitioned in a weird way. If you don't know what partitions are, that's all right. Um, all you need to know is you just have to go into here, type in uh, disk management. You'll come up with this little disk partition uh, window and then uh, it should come up somewhere here. It'll also come up in this little window down here and you might have some weird, you know, it might be split up into two different partitions. Um, that's all right. All you got to do is just right click on both and press delete volume for that. Okay. Um, and then once you've done your partitioning, sorry, this is just a little post edit. Um, if it doesn't pop up here, um, what will generally happen is some little window will pop up where um, it will ask you to format the disk. Um, once you do, once that pops up, it will just show up kind of like this. All you just got to do is press start and then it will format it for you and you'll be good to go after that's done. Okay, so once you've got that all set up, um, I'll just show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi with the router. Okay, so just like in this picture here, you'll have your Ethernet cable plugged into here and it will just be plugged into the back of your router. Um, that's all you got to do. And then um, once you've done that, you just plug in the little um, power adapter, which will just, um, it'll have a USB on the end and you can use like a phone charger if you want, plug it into a little power outlet and then you'll be good to go. Okay. So once you've done that, um, you want to go to 192.168.0.1. 192.168.0.1 and then um, it'll differ for whatever um, internet provider you're with. I'm with Telstra and if we just want to go and... 
So I can just um, Google whatever uh, modem I have and just search de default login. Um, and it's just telling me here that the username's admin, the password is typically password. So I'm just gonna put that straight in, admin password. And it'll log us in. Pop up with something that looks a little bit like this. Um, basically, that's the IP that we're going to be using to connect to this Raspberry Pi and just basically set it up. Okay, so once we know that, we're going to download a little piece of software called Putty. Uh, this will let us connect to the, um, basically like connect to the Raspberry Pi and it'll let us set it up remotely. So uh, you just want to get the 64-bit installer just found here. I've already got it set up. So um, this is what it'll look like when it's all set up. Uh, basically, all you got to do is go 192.168.0.4 or whatever the IP was for your one. And then we'll just press enter. Um, now we'll get this login thing. Okay, so you'll be asked for a login um, username in this case, um, we're just going to be using the default login, which is Ubuntu. So, so once you put in Ubuntu and pressed enter, we can put in the password, which is Ubuntu again. So we put that in. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got mine set up slightly differently. I'm actually using an Odroid machine, which is like a little Raspberry Pi alternative, but it's all set up the exact same way once we get to here. Um, all we got to do is you want to put in uh, this exact command. So up, app to get upgrade, sorry, app to get update and, and app to get upgrade and, and app to get dist upgrade. So basically what this will do is it will make sure your Ubuntu setup is um, as up to date as possible. So yeah, um, this will take a while to load. So just let it run through. Um, as I've already set this up, it says that I don't need to upgrade anything. Um, it usually will say that you need to upgrade something and you'll need to type in Y and press enter to like say, yes, I want to upgrade that. But anyway, it will prompt you when you need to do that. Okay, the next command that we put in is just sudo apt-get install default JDK. Um, this is basically downloading Java to kind of like um, allow us to run the Minecraft server. Um, if the sudo command doesn't work, just use apt-get install default JDK. And if it asks for a password, just put in Ubuntu. All right, I already have this installed as well. So it says I don't need to update anything, but it'll just be the same as the um, upgrades before. Okay, now once that's done, you want to go to papermc.io. Um, this is basically like a super fast, um, performance efficient Minecraft server platform. Um, all we got to do is just go to the download section and we just got to um, go to the latest one just click that and it'll start to download. Uh, once you have that download, you want to download this program called FileZilla if you don't have it already. Um, basically, this will let us transfer files um, just between the um, server that we're setting up and our computer. So that's how we'll get the, the Java file onto the server. So what you want to do, okay, so just as I have set up here, you want to just go 192.168.0.4 or whatever the IP was that we got at the start. Um, you want to put in Ubuntu, Ubuntu, and then the port will be 22 for this. And then, um, so after you click quick connect here, um, it should take you to a file listing on the side here. Um, what you want to do is make sure that you're in the root folder. So it's just this forward slash, uh, you can just scroll to the top here and click on that. And then we want to go into the home folder. And then what we want to do is, um, just open up our, uh, Explorer, find the download for the paper, the paper.jar. And then all we got to do is just drag that over into here. As you can see, it's just transferring there. And then we'll just be let known when that's all done. Okay, so now back to this, um, what we can do now is just go cd forward slash. Um, what that's going to do is just take us to the root directory. And then we're just going to put in cd home and that'll take us to the home directory that we're in. 
And then just to double check that everything's been transferred in there okay, we can do dir, and as we can see, we've got the paper.jar file in there. Now, just so that we can double check that Java's been downloaded properly, all we got to do is just type in Java, press enter, and it should come up with a bunch of commands that we can use. Uh, that just lets us know that it's been installed properly. We want to do java-jar, uh, and then this, um, just for the first run, and then I'll show you what to do after that. Okay, so on your first run, you'll get this fail to load eulr.txt. Um, if we go back to FileZilla, we'll see that um, if we right click and refresh this directory, we'll get the eulr.txt there. Now, all you want to do is just double click that. It'll download it from the server um, onto your computer. We can just press OK there. And then uh, it should pop up just here. Now we can right click on that, press edit. And then as you can see here, we've got the notepad file. Um, what we can do is just change the EULR from false to true, just like that. And then uh, when we do control S to save and then close it, um, it'll see that um, the file has been changed. What we can do is just press yes, and then it'll upload it back. And then that means we've accepted the EULR. Okay, so after that, we just want to run the server as we would, just like this, and then, okay, so if everything goes right, we should just be getting some little info messages like this, and that just means that the server is going to be slowly starting up. Uh, while that's happening, we'll start to set up the port forwarding. So when we say port forwarding, we just mean that um, we're going to allow it um, your router to send the Minecraft server to the outside world so that other people can basically connect to it. So once again, we're just going to go to 192.168.0.1, uh, put in our admin password, and then uh, what you're going to want to do is find um, somewhere in your advanced settings a page for port forwarding. Uh, once we're here, we can just add a new port forward, um, call it MC server or something. Uh, the start port's going to be 25565, end port's going to be 25565. Um, protocol is going to be both. And then your local IP address will just be the same as what we've been using to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So here, I'm just going to put a four and then we can just press OK and that'll be just in there. We can press apply. And uh, if everything goes to plan, it should just be in there and it should just be ready to go. So, okay, so now we just wanna go to Google, put in my IP. Uh, this will just load up our public IP address. So it's different to the 192.168.1. That's like a local IP address, so only we can connect to that. Um, but all our friends will be connecting to the public IP. So this is what, this is what you'll send your friends um, and this is what they'll put into Minecraft as the server IP. Um, as opposed to you, you'll be using the 192.168. whatever it is. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you found this uh, helpful in some way. And yeah, just comment if you have any questions.